All right, my brothers and my sisters, once again, Reverend Hercules coming to you live, New Generation Gospel Church. I pray everybody's doing well. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. It's so good to be back. It's so good to be here. Uh, last week I was up in South Carolina, and for those of you that tune in, thank you so much for watching. Had a wonderful time with my pastor, Dr. Shane Stutzman, his lovely wife and family. And uh, by the way, Orange Baptist Church, God bless y'all. Uh, you, you, you treated me and my wife with nothing but class, and I thank you for that. And, and, it's, and, and I just want to thank y'all for being who you are. Keep on serving in that community because it's a lot of people need to know about Jesus. Amen, amen. But it's great to be back. Uh, I look forward to the word today that God has given me to give to you. Uh, I love studying his word. I love listening to his word. And that's something that we're going to be talking about uh, uh, today. But uh, I just want to let all of you know, if you're not my Facebook friend, uh, friend request me. And if, even if I don't know you... I'm going to say yes because we're living in times where a lot of people need a lot of help. A lot of people need your encouragement too. So I want to encourage you to start encouraging other people because you don't know what people are going through. Amen? So this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I mean, my brothers and sisters, I ask that you will uh, continue to help us in this ministry. Uh, I don't ask much, but I do ask that you share this message with everyone you know. Not only this message, but the messages that I've preached in the past and those that I'm going to be preaching in the future. The way you help this ministry is by spreading the word of God. Amen? And that's what I do. That's what you do. And then that will be a blessing. And also, if you feel that this uh, ministry has been a blessing to you, uh, I want to go to another level and reach a lot more people. Uh, with that being said, it costs money. But don't give because of that. Be a cheerful giver the way Jesus or the way Paul said that we should be. We should be, we should be uh, happy to give. Uh, we should be having with a cheerful heart. Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do that. Because God sees why you're giving. And, and, and if you can give by writing, giving support, by donating, uh, whatever it is that you want to do, that's fine with me. Amen? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about the kingdom's work. Amen? Amen and amen. All right. Uh, I want to get into this word, and uh, the reason why I want this word, and, and I want you to really listen today. Normally, I, I ask you to, to preach, preach you, or write this down. I may have you do that, but really today's message is that I really want you to focus on listening. I want you to listen so you can understand what thus says the Lord. All right? So let's go to Luke chapter 8, the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 8. And um, when you find Luke chapter 8, I'm going to focus on verse number 8. But I want to set the scene up. Uh, starting at verse number 4. Amen? Luke chapter 8. We're going to focus on verse number 8, but I'm going to start at verse 4 so then you can understand it. All right? Here we go. All right. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus, from town to town, he told this parable. This is what Jesus said. He says, a farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, 
which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, and this is why I'm here this morning, or whenever you listen to this message, still others fell, this is Jesus talking about, he says, still others fell, or other seeds fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. Listen to what Jesus said also. When he said this, he called out. Jesus now, he called out. And he says, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. This morning, this afternoon, or tonight, whenever you get an opportunity to watch this, I'm going to preach a subject title. It's really a question. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Just like that, my brothers and sisters, we are in the last Sunday of February 2022. And, and, and we are blessed to be in the land of the living. My prayers are with you and your family. My prayers are with the Ukraine uh, people and the families and everything that's going on over there. I am praying uh, that, that for peace in that land. I am praying for peace in this entire universe. I mean, it's time for us to start praying. If there's ever a time that we need to pray, it's now. So I lift up that country. We must not only pray for them, but we must pray for this entire world. Every chance I get, I am praying for you. I don't even know you, but I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God's will is done in your life. I'm praying that God's will is done in your life and in your family's life. I am praying that God is going to guide you to be the best you. I want God to guide you so you can be the best you. So my thoughts and prayers are focused on peace in your home and peace within you. Amen? Amen. As I was preparing for this message uh, this, this early in the week, uh, a few of my loved ones came to my mind. And, and for those of you uh, that are my relatives in Texas, you'll, you, you'll kind of relate to this. Uh, the reason why my grandparents, my father, my mother, and my college coach, Coach Fred Akers, came to mind is real simple. They came to mind because I paid attention, my brothers and sisters, and I listened to the words they taught me. Uh, growing up, I took heed to what they were saying to me. Like, for an example, uh, uh, my, my dad taught me this. Uh, and and uh, yesterday was his birthday, and my dad would have turned, uh, he would have turned uh, 85 years old. My father would have turned 85 years old yesterday, February 26th. So happy to be belated birthday, Joham. I love you. But my dad, because I listened to him so much, one thing he always said to me is, be your own self-man. Huh. My mama, she taught me, sweetie, keep a smile on your face. <laughs> and then she also said, if you see something you want in the store, buy it, because you can't take it with you. <laughs> She would say, keep a smile on your face. <clears throat> and keep a smile on your face. And if you see something in the store, you won't, you might as well buy it. Because, baby, you can't take it with you. My grandfather, the late and the great Reverend L.W. Wilson, I did not understand at the time coming home from college and, and uh, being there on weekends sometimes. And he would call Mama up and say, is my grandson there? Tell him to come on down we go have a cup of coffee. I want to talk to him. And so I'm drinking a cup of coffee with Papa, and he would always say, Grandson, make sure you're reading your Bible on a Friday night. 
I didn't understand it then because you know me, I, I was cutting the rug back in those days on a Friday night, but I get it. Not only did my grandfather, Reverend L.W. Wilson, taught me to read my Bible at night, but Big D, <laughs> my dad's father, Big D, he said something to me at a very young age. And he said, he says, make sure you take your time when you're doing yard work. Make sure you take your time doing yard work. I was listening. And then Big Mama Wilson. Let me tell y'all something. She had a personality, and I would always listen, and she would always be laughing. So she taught me, or I, I listened to her as she was laughing, full of joy. And then, oh my goodness, Big Mama Wall, I'm going to tell y'all something. She was something else. Big Mama used to tell me, uh, uh, and, and Barita, you'll know what I'm talking about if you're listening. Uh, Big Mama Walls used to say, McCurry Jr., go out there and get me that switch. I knew exactly what was about to happen. <laughs> and I would say, Big Mama, yes, ma'am, I'm going right now. I call, I climb up the tree and get the best switch you need, as long as you don't put it on me. Amen. And then listening to my head coach, the late and the great Coach Fred Akers at the University of Texas, he would take me and my teammates and we would go to this big auditorium before the game, hours and hours before the game, and he would teach us to visualize what's going to happen in the game, to visualize your life, to visualize how successful you want to be. The reason why I mention those few people is because I was listening. And I remember, and I took heed, and I want you to do the same thing today. I want you to take heed to what I am about to give you. There was this uh, survey listening uh, to people by Ralph G. Nichols. And he was a top executive of a major manufacturing plant up in Chicago. And, and, and they were asked to take a survey on the role that listening plays in their workplace. Later, an executive at, at their executive seminar on listening, uh, that's all they would do. And so three things, three people commented, those who participated in that survey, and, 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 and they, they, they had never thought that listening played a major important part. But now, they are extremely aware, and, 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 and uh, they thought that perhaps 80% of their work depended on listening to someone else. I've been thinking why things have been going wrong, one of them mentioned. I suddenly realized that many of the troubles have resulted, listen to this, from someone not hearing instructions. And then this person says, I've decided that listening is the most important link to our business. So today, which brings me right to this Jesus doing the talking. Jesus is telling the parable about the four soils. Jesus is telling the people. He's telling uh, uh, his, his disciples. He says, a farmer went out and sowed seed, and some of it fell on the path, and it was trampled and eaten up by birds. That's not really why I'm here, but I'm going to break it down for you. Sometimes when we share the word of God to people, the path that they are on gets eaten up by whatever it is that the atmosphere, listen to me, of negativity is destroyed. Jesus sowed the word. The farmer sowed the seed. And some of it fell on the path. And it was eaten up by whatever, in this case it was birds, in the atmosphere. What's in your atmosphere? 
that's eating away what God has told you to do. Eating away of your dreams. Eating away of what you want to accomplish. Someone gave you a great word. you excited about it. You share it with other people and they tear it down. That ain't going to work for you. I, I'm going to do a series. How to eliminate negative folks. It's not rude. It's not rude at all. You can pray for them. That ain't rude. But I, I have no... As soon as someone come at me negative, I'll pray about it. i say, Lord, can I help this person? But I'm not going to let their negativity affect me. If I'm preaching, say, preach, preacher. He says, a farmer sowed seed and some fell on the path and it trampled by the birds. Some of you are being trampled by the negative news that's going on, on the news, in the world, on your job, around your family. And then Jesus said in verse number six, he says, some fell on rocky ground and, and, and it withered away. And, and the reason why it withered away is it, it, real simple. It had no moisture. It, it, it couldn't be a, a water. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I went and got another hedge. For my hedges out in front, uh, one of them, you know, I dug up because it just died. Everything around was good. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go get another one, planted it in the same place. And I've been watering it. I've been nurturing it because I don't want it to wither and die. Some fell on rocky ground. It withered because it wasn't moisture. Every Sunday, sometimes throughout the week, I give a word. Of encouragement. I give a word from the Lord. And the reason why I do that is to moisture, give you moisture, give you water so you can grow spiritually. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm called to do. And what I want you to do, I want you to drink as much of this word that you can. Some on rocky ground and it withered away because it had no moisture. You spread the good news and it falls on someone who just don't want to take it. They don't want to cultivate it. They don't want it to grow. They don't want to water it by reading the word. How are you going to grow spiritually? And you're still, and you're still doing what you did 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You know better. You know what the word says, and you're still doing it. You still got that negative mindset because you're not listening. God is bringing people toward your life, giving you what you already know to do, and you look at that person like, I ain't going to take that. You know, God, for some reason, you are watching me because God probably said, listen, listen to this man of God. He going to tell you exactly what I told the people over 2,000 years ago. Because in verse 4 he says, a large crowd gathered. And the people were coming to Jesus from town after town. I got people watching all over. From town after town. Listen. And look at verse number 7 with me. Because I'm going to get to verse number 8. That's where I want to land. Verse 7 says, other seed fell among thorns which grew up with it and choked the plants. Some of you are hanging out with people that's choking you out. Preach, preacher! You are hanging out with people that's choking you out. And you wonder why you can't progress. And you wonder why you're not growing. And you wonder like at night time you're bitter. Who you been hanging out with all day? What you been reading all day? What you been watching all day? No one is going to choke you out. You got to eliminate that. And you know how you got to eliminate it? I'm so glad you asked. How do we eliminate it? Listen to what Jesus said in verse number 8. Jesus said in verse number 8, The former did all of this, sowing here, sowing there, sowing here, sowing there. Jesus said, still, 
Other seeds fell on good soil. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. So the farmer went out. He spread the good seed. You and I are spreading the word of God. We're spreading the word of God. Everywhere we go, we're spreading the word of God. And some of it is falling on rocky ground. But that ain't your, you ain't got to deal with that. Some of it, when you spread the good news, and they're around so many negative people that they just pluck it right out from them. They hear a good word, pluck it out. Others, they spread, and it falls on rocky ground, and then it, 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 it can't, it, it don't have any moisture. And, and, as, and I'll never forget this expression, a hard head, get yourself behind. I, I know that's not popular nowadays, but the generation I grew up, we, we knew better. Preach, preacher. And then others fail. And when it fell, it, 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 it fell among the thorns. You know, I give you a good word. Next thing you know, you go over so-and-so house and they fill you up with a bunch of negativity. Give you the word and then next thing you know, you're reading negativity. Give you the word of God, giving you encouragement, letting you know, listen, it's all going to be all right. I know in the natural, it doesn't seem like it at this time. But the power of life and death, the proverb writer wrote, is in your tongue. What are you speaking? But here, Jesus said something. After he talked about what the farmer was spreading and, and, and how he was spreading the seeds. And, and then the last part, he says, some still fell on good ground. You're a good ground. And a hundred times more, the crops yield. It's falling on good ground. That's you. It's falling on good ground. That is you. And the reason why that is you, listen, it's real simple. You know why it's you? Because when Jesus said this, I want you to imagine Jesus. <coughs> People from town to town are coming. And he's out there. After he did that parable, after he told that story, he said this with a loud voice. He said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now here's my question to you. Who are you listening to? Who in the world are you listening to? Are you listening? Are you running your mouth? One thing I learned, this is what I learned in school, playing professional sports, in life, listen, if you don't know, it's okay. I was one of those students back in the day where some of my classmates thought I was dumb because every time I didn't hear or understand, I raised my hand. Listen, uh, Miss Bennett, you got to go over. You got to go over this. Uh, Miss Johnson, listen. If Miss Williams, please do me a favor. Can you repeat what you said? I want to make sure I hear. And the reason why I want to make sure I want to hear is because whenever the tests come, I'll know the answer. Some of you right now, right now, the reason why you are in the predicament that you're in, because you're not listening. You keep running your mouth. You just keep running your mouth. And Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. You got to start listening to what thus says the Lord. Because there's a lot you can listen to. I had the, I had the pleasure to go to South Carolina last weekend. And, and I heard a lot. I mean, I heard a lot, and I'm like, wow. I came back to Florida. 
I listen and I'm hearing people talk. Well, you know, gas go go up to $7. Well, you, you know, it ain't going to get no better. What are you listening to? Are you listening to the word? Are you listening to what Jesus is saying? Are you listening to what the word of God is saying? I don't know about you. I'm eliminating negative people. I got a phone. If you're in my contact, that means you're positive. Simple. Simple. Jesus says, whoever has ear, let them hear. Some of you, need to turn the TV off, need to turn the radio off, and uh, go in a quiet place, and just let the Lord talk to you. The word I don't use anymore is, I'm too busy. I, I, don't, I, I don't say that. Oh, man, I've been busy, man. I, I'm just, I'm too busy. Either you're too busy or you're not organized. Because if you're organized, if you know there's 24 hours in a day, you don't need six hours of sleep, seven, maybe. Go to work, go to school, work out, eat right. Listen to great music. Read the word of God. Not that busy. You're just not organized. Yeah, I said it. I'm too busy. Man, I ain't got time. I ain't, you know, I ain't okay. Yeah, you keep being busy. I'm listening to the Lord. Some sold on rocky ground. But the word was still being spread. Some, some fell among, among the, 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 the weeds and got choked out. Some fell on things and they came and got plucked out. Then Jesus said some fell on good soil. And it yielded a hundredfold. Then Jesus concluded, he says, whoever, that's you. Whoever has ears, I know you got ears. Some of you are nosy. <laughs> you hear everything. Let them hear. Here's my challenge to you for the week of the first week of March. Can you believe that I'm saying that the first week of March is Tuesday? We got one more day in February. Some of you need to just just. Start listening. You know what C-Law means? Think on these things. Shh. Shh. This was a message only for people like you and me. You know what we need to do? Listen more. Listen more. This week, the first week in March, my challenge to you that you eliminate oh yeah I'm gonna say it eliminate negative okay let me just say eliminate two negative people in your life in a godly way now say listen I love you brother listen I love your sister but I, 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 I need to start listening to some good stuff now I want you to stay with me because I'm going somewhere. I'm going to a place where there won't be any more sickness. Won't be any more pain. Won't be any more heartaches. I get to go hang out on the streets of gold. Come on. Just start listening.
my brothers and sisters, as I close, I have one question for you. Who are you listening to? My name is Reverend Hercules. And remember this. I love you all. No matter what.